Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Miss Angler's biology class. I am Miss Angler. In today's video, we are going to be looking over the chloroplast, the organelle that is responsible for photosynthesis. In this particular video, we are going to look at the basic structure. We are going to look at how they're going to ask some questions on photosynthesis around the chloroplast. Now, this particular video is an introduction to the section of photosynthesis as well, but you can watch this video if you are in grade 8 and 9. If you are in grade 11 later on, I will tag the videos that you're going to watch after this if you're going to be learning about, for example, the light and dark phase in photosynthesis. Now, if you are new here, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed with the notifications turned on because I post every Tuesday and Thursday. And if you are in grade 11 and 12, you should think about getting my cheat sheet study guide, which is available on missangler.co.za. It makes your life so easy easy. It really like condenses it. I mean, the biggest complaint is there's so much to learn in life sciences. How can I make it easier? Well, that's the point of the cheat sheet. So let's begin going over the basic structure of our chloroplast. Now, I want to remind you that no matter what grade you are in, you could be asked to draw or label or identify any of these structures. It's one of the most commonly asked questions when it comes to drawing organelles is to draw a chloroplast. So let's go through our major structures and what they do. First things first, we have the outer membrane. Now, I want to remind you that a membrane, remember, controls what enters and exits our uh, cell, but also in this case, what enters and exits the chloroplast. So whenever you see membrane, I want you to think of exit or entrance, right? But then you'll notice we have a second membrane. Now, this can be confusing because we wonder, well, if we're already checking what's going in and out, why do we need another membrane? We need another membrane because of surface area. And that is why there is two of them. There are so many important reactions taking place inside the chloroplast that you need two membranes in order to make sure that you have enough surface area so that they're all happening simultaneously. The next structure I want to draw your attention to is a real star of the show, and that is going to be the thylakoid. Now, the thylakoid is these stacked sort of um, coin-like structures that we see over here. So one thylakoid, if we draw it from the side, kind of looks like a singular, a singular coin. And then if we stack the thylakoids on top of each other, we make something called a granum. Now, a granum means one stack. So that means if I add on a few more in my drawing here, this becomes a granum. If there are many of these granum, we use the word grana, which is literally a plural for a plural, if that makes sense. So a thylakoid is one. A granum is a stack of thylakoids, and many granum are called grana. I know it can get a little bit confusing because of these words, but we've really got to be on top of our game when it comes to terminology. Now, why are thylakoids the star of the show? Well, they are the ones that contain the chlorophyll, and they are where major steps towards creating glucose and sugar, that's where it happens. That's where the magic happens, inside the thylakoids. Now, the thylakoids are not sitting in an empty space. They're actually in like a, a gel liquid-like substance called the stroma. Please be very careful with the spelling here. You do get something called a stoma. Let me just spell it for you so you can see it here. Stoma. The stoma is part of the stomata. Please make sure that you put that letter R in when you are spelling stroma because very often we by accident leave it out and we end up spelling stoma and that's very, very, very problematic. Moving on to our stroma lamella. Now, in different textbooks, this is called different things. Maybe in your textbook, it's called integrana lamella or middle lamella or just lamella. They're all the same thing and they are all acceptable to be interchangeable. 
Last but not least, this picture uh, has a little intermembrane space. That one is like an optional label. It's very rare for you to include that, um, and so I don't think it's necessary for you to do so. Now, if you are ever asked why are chloroplasts structured the way they are, remember it's all about surface area. They are flattened, they are disc-shaped, they have double membranes, and it all comes back to providing enough surface area so that many reactions can take place at once. Now, I wanted to also include a micrograph of what chloroplasts look like inside cells. And so if I just outline here a plant cell, here is a lovely plant cell with its cell wall. And as you can see here, we have thousands of chloroplasts. And even if we zoom in a bit closer, you will be able to see them. And so each one of these is a chloroplast. Inside of that would be all the structures that we've just identified now. Now, it's at this point we need to quickly unpack photosynthesis. Now, if you are in grade 11, the next video you need to watch is light independent and light dependent phases in photosynthesis. And I've tagged that video above now for you to go and watch after this one. If you are in a junior grade, you can still watch this part here because it's still relevant because you still need to know the photosynthesis equation. Now, when we talk about photosynthesis, remember it is the process whereby we take the following substances. We are going to take water and we are going to take carbon dioxide and we are going to produce glucose and we are going to produce oxygen. And in order to get from point A to point B, we're going to need two substances. We are going to need sunlight and we are going to need chlorophyll. Now that we have our little equation here, this is the process of photosynthesis. Where it occurs is inside the thylakoid. So if we have a look at our little diagram alongside, you will see that we've zoomed in on a chloroplast over here, and you can see that light is moving into our thylakoids. Now, this is an important thing that our grade 11s would need to know, and that is photosynthesis is divided into two parts. And the first part takes place inside of our thylakoids, and it requires light. And this is really important. You must know where this reaction takes place. It takes place inside the thylakoids. However, there is a second step to photosynthesis. And this second step, also known over here as the Calvin cycle, that takes place in the stroma. That means not all photosynthesis takes place in the same place and that is really really important to know especially when you're in the older grades and you need to differentiate where this is occurring now when working with photosynthesis it's really important to know what the words mean if we use the words products or we use reagent or we use um, site of photosynthesis, what does that all mean? I need you to know that the products of photosynthesis are going to be glucose and oxygen, whereas the substrates are going to be water and carbon dioxide. And I also would like you to know one last little thing, that this equation can be reversed, which means we can actually go in the opposite direction except instead of using chlorophyll and sunlight, we are going to use the mitochondria and we are going to use energy. So essentially, photosynthesis is complementary to cellular respiration. If you know the cellular respiration formula, you will know it's exactly the same as this one in terms of the substances. The only difference is that obviously cellular respiration does not have chlorophyll or sunlight in it. But the substances, the water, carbon dioxide, glucose and oxygen, those are exactly the same. So they're actually complementary processes to one another. 
Now, as always, I like to finish off these lessons with a terminology recap, and we've got just a little bit of terminology. At the very beginning, we spoke about chloroplasts and the fact that chloroplasts are where you know, photosynthesis occurs. It's the site of photosynthesis. And chloroplasts are filled with those coin-like structures called thylakoids. Now, when you stack many thylakoids on top of each other, you produce a granum. And those granum or grana, they are not in a dry, empty space the chloroplasts are filled with a like gel liquid like matrix or fluid which we call the stroma the stroma is where some photosynthetic reactions take place just like the ones that take place in the thylakoid they complement one another and they work together in order to produce those sugars and the oxygen gas that it gives off and last but not least um, we spoke about integrana lamella remember that was the one where you could get different kinds depending on your textbook basically the integrana lamella is these in between connections between your thylakoids they connect one thylakoid to a another in some textbooks they just call them lamella they call them interlamella they all mean the same thing as long as you see the word lamella we're talking about the same structure now if you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed with your notifications turned on and i will see you all again soon bye